Founders Award. This is the artist that I have no doubt will continue bringing stories into your homes for many more decades to come all over the world. The man who is undeniably deserving of this honor. And now it is with great pride that I present the 2018 International Emmy Founders Award to my friends, Greg Berlanti. I'd like to thank the International Academy for this incredible honor and for recognizing not just myself, but really the efforts of all of my colleagues and coworkers across the years with whom I share this tonight. Um, all the nominees tonight, all the winners, Sophie for that incredible speech. We were all crying at our table. Um, I'd like to thank Julie Pleck uh, for her beautiful introduction, really for her friendship. Julie changed my life many years ago with her belief in me. There was a year or so after college when at a particular low point I had stopped writing and she took me to dinner and told me I was too good to give up and she literally moved me into her apartment building and would ask me every night to read what I'd written that day. And then, as if that wasn't enough, she helped me get my first job as a writer. So, I really feel as though I should be, I, I do feel as though I should be handing this award to her and look forward to the not so distant future when I am. Uh, I'm sure there are more worthy individuals of this kind of recognition, but I'm not sure there could ever be someone more grateful. And not just for this, but for all of it, really the whole life that working in TV has given to me. Growing up as a kid, 40 minutes from here in the 80s, I had a few things working against me socially. I was the smallest kid in my class and asthmatic, and I loved comic books and Dungeons and Dragons. I was the dungeon master for my local Dungeons and Dragons group. <laughs> I didn't just run the audio-visual club at my school, I actually ate lunch alone with the AV teacher every day. And all of this is I was just figuring out that I was gay. Incidentally, being a nerd is safer than having a girlfriend if you don't want the world to know you're gay because bullies look at you and they think, well, God's not cruel enough to make someone that weird and gay. <laughs> so I felt pretty alone when I was a kid, except for when I was watching TV. Many nights when I was scared about who or what I was, I found solace and connection in the world of television. And there were four of us in a 1,300 square foot house, and the TV was on all the time, and I loved all of it. Saturday morning cartoons where I first met the DC characters on Super Friends, and the nighttime soaps I would watch with my mom, Dallas and Knott's Landing, and the miniseries like North and South and Roots. And Saturday was about seeing who was gonna guest star on the love boat and Fantasy Island. <laughs> and my dad and I didn't have a ton in common, but we could both root for Jim Rockford or B.A. Baracus or cheer on Colonel Steve Austin versus Bigfoot, or Bill Bixby as David Bruce Banner, the Hulk. And my whole family could laugh at Archie and Edith, or the Fonz, or the Golden Girls, and cry at Little House on the Prairie. And I knew at the time that these worlds gave me a sense of comfort and connection. What I didn't realize at the time is that these shows were teaching me how to tell stories. The first storyteller I wanted to be, and this is a Jim Henson-themed evening tonight, was Jim Henson. I loved The Muppet Show. So I started building puppets in our basement, and I would put on shows at the local library. Now, my mom passed away last year from cancer, and tonight is incredibly bittersweet because she was, for sure, the first person in my life who knew what I would do for a living. And I know this because she saw me doing one of these shows at the library, and I came home one day, and she had cards made up. And it said, Puppet Shows Greg Berlanti. <laughs> now, two things happened in that moment. First, the meager social life that I already had was pretty much halted forever when I became the local town puppeteer. And the second thing that happened was I got paid money to create stories for the first time. And my mom gave those cards to everyone. She left a pile at the library and the doctor's office and the church. And before I knew it, at 11 years old, I was performing birthday parties every single weekend. And I would spend the week writing shows. And my mom would drive me to the parties and tell me what to charge. She was the first producer I ever worked with. <laughs> and still the best one, in my opinion. <laughs> my father happily is here tonight. And if my mom was my first producer, he was sort of my first network executive. <laughs> now, my dad was the hardest working man I knew. He left for work by 5 a.m. in the morning and got home at 8 at night. And he would edit my book reports. And many times, he'd read them after I'd gone to bed. And in the morning, he'd leave them on the sink in the bathroom we all shared. And sometimes, they'd have extreme notes. And sometimes, they'd just say, could be better. 
Not as good as your last one. How hard did you really work on this? It's come full circle because if my dad prepared me for network notes, network notes in turn have prepared me for notes I get from our two and a half year old son when I go to tell him nightly stories. He's recently taken to suggesting alterations that could make the story better. Does this story have a monster? Maybe you should put a monster in this story, Dad. I like monsters. Anyway, puppet shows led to writing plays in college at Northwestern. And just about the time I was figuring out how much I loved writing, one of the famous alumni was coming to campus to speak. TV icon and film director Gary Marshall, creator of Happy Days, The Fonz, which I mentioned, and many, many other television wonderful hits. I got to the event early, but when I ca it came time to ask questions, I was too shy to speak to him. But I got another shot when I saw him later in the day at the student union. And this time, I mustered enough courage to talk to him. I blurted out, Mr. Marshall, I, I think I want to be a writer for a living, but how do I know if I have the talent to make it? And he leaned forward in his famous accent, which I will not attempt to imitate here, and said, you got to have some talent, and you got to work hard, but mostly, and he paused, and I was certain he was going to give me the answer to the Hollywood universe. And he said, shit, you have to be lucky enough to step in shit. <laughs> now, I did OK with the first two. I worked hard, and I have some talent, but I really scored in the third department. I have been so lucky in my life. Lucky enough to have the family I had and friends from childhood, some of whom are with me here tonight. Lucky to have met people like Julie Pleck and Carl Ogawa and Sarah Schechter, who are all the best friends and coworkers a, a person could ever ask for. I'm lucky to work with everyone at Warner Brothers with and for TV legend himself, Mr. Peter Roth, whom I met. I met at 29 after he read my first pilot for Everwood and believed in that show and me ever since. He also took over where my parents left off in terms of both thinking I could do anything like my mom and simultaneously like my father, always wanting everything I do to just be a little bit better. <laughs> the place I got my luckiest is my husband, Robbie, and our son, Caleb, who both remind me every day that real life is better than any story you can dream up. And all of these people are my family, which is really what the stories and the shows I write are about. Whether the cast are wearing capes or not, they're all families helping each other get through, survive, and celebrate life. And whenever I hear from a fan, especially a young person, who tells me that our characters or stories make them feel less alone, I know exactly how they feel. And I'm just grateful that I've gotten in my life to be a part of such a wonderful art form that can move people, make them feel less alone, and at our best, perhaps, make them reflect on the value of their own lives in some way. One quick final coda. About 10 years ago, I was executive producing a show called Brothers and Sisters, and we hired Gary Marshall to act in it. And at that time, I was producing three shows for the first time and was the first Northwestern alumni since him to have three network shows on at once. And I was feeling overwhelmed, and he congratulated me. And I chose that moment to remind him of our initial introduction and what he had said many years before, and that the key to success was basically stepping in shit. And with his trademark sense of humor, he looked at me and smiled and said, good for you. You really stepped in a lot of it. <laughs> I really did. Thank you very much.